my name is Lindsay Palmer. I'm a master wine. I'm here with Chef Mikhail Anthony, and we're here to explore the regions of Ribera y Rueda, and also to give you some tasting tips on how to be a better food and wine pair so that you can win a trip to Spain and taste these w wines in the region themselves. Rueda is Verdejo and it can also be made with Sauvignon Blanc. What today we're tasting through though is its classic Spain's iconic white grape that is Verdejo. Verdejo stylistically in a traditional sense or classic sense is kind of reminds you of like a Sauvignon Blanc or a Pinot Grigio. So think crisp, mouthwatering, refreshing, vibrant, um, kind of medium body, dances on the palate. So we're gonna start with the wines of Rueda. We have three whites to play around with and the exciting thing here is they represent different styles. What did you think of this first wine? I think it's delicious. It's crisp. Uh, it's easy on my nose. I like that. If, if that means anything. Mm, um, yeah. What am I looking for? Freshness, cleanness. Is there anything detectably wrong with it? Like when I smell this to your point, it is kind of easy on the nose. There's a lot of orchard fruits that mm. easily jump out of the glass. It's fresh. Like fresh meaning like you can almost see the fruits as you're smelling the wine. Yeah, so this wine, I think you crushed it. It's fresh. It does taste like apples and um, it's floral. But how would the palate, how does it make your palate feel? Because it's a I good feel like It almost like it cleansed my palate. Like it, it, I've refreshed new palate. <laughs> and that's a great feature for food and wine pairing, having, mm. and what he's describing is the acidity, and the, the acidity is your vibrancy, your freshness to the wine, and it's very bright in this wine, and that is crucial because, to your point, you eat a dish, especially a richer dish, or something that, you know, like cheese or butter, or, or it kind of sticks on your palate, you want to be able to refresh. So, in your mind, fresh, crisp, orchard fruits, apples, mm. what dish do you think this would rock with? I would say definitely, like you said, cheese mm. it would be a nice first first course to starter appetizer. Mm. Um, like a soft rind, or are you thinking like something with age, or both? I don't know. Yeah, I when when I do cheese mm. dishes, uh, cheese plates, I would I like to provide uh, many different textures mm. of cheese. So mm. I would I would have a softer cheese. Mm. Uh, I think this would go great with like a blue cheese. Yeah. Wow, very different nose here. Um, I'm getting pear, like a very intense pear in this mineral expression that is exciting. This vineyard dates back to the 1700s. Uh, so it's a really old vine wine and I think aromatically you get that concentration. What are you smelling? Well, it's, uh, it has a stronger smell than the other one before. Mm. Uh, I think it's still easy on my nose. Mm. Uh, what I see is I see a lot more bubbles and I taste it when I drink it. It's a little more bubbly. Yeah. And uh, equally, it, it is refreshing still. Um, stronger though, definitely stronger, but, del but delicious. Yeah, it's very refreshing. To his point, it's got more body and power. So, and concentration of flavor on mm -hmm. the palate. Yeah. So it, it kind of, yang, there's like, it hits your palate and it's going acid body. This wine has a lot to say. And I think stylistically, sorry, stylistically, a nice difference from that first wine, just showing you the diversity of styles. And I forgot to mention this region has some very high elevation plantings over 2000 feet above sea level, which is why you get this amazing acid mm -hmm. in this basically desert like dry condition area. Mm. So power, acidity, but minerality. And to your point with the bubbles, it's all, often wineries, winemakers for white wine will intentionally bottle with uh, a little gas, CO2, for freshness. And I think you caught that. So let's move to three and see what we get there. So this one I'm getting secondary flavors. So here you've done some interaction with oak, which is interesting when you taste it against the stainless steel, you're gonna get more um, savory flavors, Leasy uh, yeast contact, so that's your biscuit toast. I put nuts, we put nuts out here to kind of pull in that concept that when you use oak, you get nuts and spices. And 
hence the other spices here too. So I think I think it changes the aromatic expression. Did you find that too? Like Yeah, absolutely. I yeah. definitely get the oak. Nice. Yeah. And it's not like so this is the orchard fruit. Here, here. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a different expression. And on the palate On the palate, you feel the oak, it, it gives structure to the wine. It gives a foundation, and it also gives a nice long finish, um, which is the point of why you'd use oak in, in any wine, is to add complexity and length, which is part of complexity, and structure in this case to build mouthfeel like we talked about, you know? So what did you think about that? I mean, it's very different on the palate than the others. Yeah, they. I like the way you place them from uh, the the steel mm. to the oak is they're very the they do get build in body uh, I think uh, they're all very delicious and uh, clean finish when I'm mm. on the palate when I'm done drinking it mm. it's, it's very good yeah and they all have this beautiful uh, lift or refreshing acidity which is a hallmark of the Verdejo grape so I think we've got here a rock star lineup really representing the diversity of the Grape Verdejo stylistically and a great representation of the region. The Ribera del Duero wines, in contrast, are reds. So it's kind of fun, they're put together, right? You've got your white wines from Rueda and your red wines from Ribera del Duero. Ribera del Duero, or Ribera, is 100% from the Tempranillo grape. It's a deeply colored, almost, almost purple, and it can be opaque, difficult to see through the glass. So very deep colored wines. And these are blue black fruits. Uh, they historically have used American and now French oak. So you'll see a, a lot of oak undertones um, and often age them for a long time before release, especially if it's a grand reserve of quality. So these can also show a lot of tertiary flavors. All right, so let's taste some reds here from Ribera del Duero. And again, it's along the Ribera River, hence the name of the region, and this is extreme continentality at its best, which means concentration, color in the reds, you're going to get structure, and you're going to get a lot of beautiful pure fruits without the expense of acidity. Because of the cooling influence of the elevation along this river valley, it actually gets up to uh, 2,300 feet above sea level, one of the highest regions in all of Spain. And you wouldn't think Spain is mountainous, but in fact, there's a lot of mountains in Spain and in this area. So the high elevation helps keep it cool and also preserve acid, which is the foundation and also the foundation when you're pairing with wine, you need, or with food and wine, you really need to have a vibrant backbone of acidity in your wine. Can't be understated, the importance of that. So what do we got here? We've got a very, these are both very deep wines and I would say color-wise very close, and when you're assessing color, you really need to do it directly on white, kind of what I'm doing here. You kind of tilt it on its side, look straight through, and you can see they're very close, but which, I'll ask uh, Mikel, which one do you think is more purple, and which one do you think is more ruby? If you were to take a guess. I would say the Azuaga is more purple, and ruby is the more antidoto. Yeah, I'm with you. I think yes? that's awesome, yeah. Hmm. So ruby and purple are great colors to use to describe red wines, and they're both fairly deep um, intensity, and it, it just makes it lovely to look at. And as we're swirling here, and what you're looking for is viscosity, and that is measured by what are called tiers or legs that form and slide down the glass. And to be frank, it's kind of overhyped. It is an indication of the possible alcohol level, but it doesn't confirm your alcohol level. You really need to taste the wine. But that, that is what it could suggest, is the overall viscosity, which, which is linked to the potential alcohol of the wine. So the slower the legs are to form and slide down the glass, theoretically, again, you gotta taste it, the higher the alcohol. You know, I wasn't expecting this, but there's, I get like a tobacco leafy character. You see what I mean? There's like a leafy herbal component there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And don't be afraid to look outside of the world of fruits when you're tasting and you're trying to pull things from the glass. You know, it's, it's, wine tasting is really impressionistic. So what impression are you getting here? So categories to think about are nutty, uh, baking spices, um, 
uh, fruit characteristics, dark fruits, plums, blackberries, black cherries, blueberries. In this case, and if it's more a lighter red, you may get more red fruits, but in this case, it's more black. And then your, your oak flavors as represented here and tertiary, and then your non-fruits, floral, herbal, vegetal, all these things people forget about because you, you, you hear a lot of people talk just about fruit, but this has a lot, I feel like, of fun different categories. It's herbal, it's also got the black fruit, it's got the oak characteristic. You wanna taste it? Yeah. So how would you describe how the, how the mouth feel feels? The mouth feel. I definitely feel it uh, on, my, on my tongue. Uh, I have a question yeah. in regards to the body. Okay. When you're looking at it, is that in regards, like you said, to the light, or is mm. it how how thick it is on your tongue? Mm. Great question. How thick it is on your tongue? Okay. Like you can you can guess from looking at it, mm -hmm. but the proof's always in the pudding. Okay. The palate gives you all the information. Okay. Seriously, that's where I focus most of my time on with wine. Is what's how's it feel? And I think you crushed it. Like it's got a round, full, soft. Uh, you could use voluptuous again palette. Mm -hmm. Like there's a real richness and also softness. Like there's tannins which are drying but not excessively so. Which I think would really appeal so to a lot of people. That, that yeah. up, the more tannins, the drier yeah. the wine. Tannin is uh, a, so acidity is the mouth watering sensation. Tannin is the mouth drying sensation. Okay. They're opposites. Mm -hmm. And for me, when I'm perceiving tannins, it's on the finish and it's linked to oak. It can be linked to the type of grape it is. It can also be linked to how the wine was made. Thank so there's a few you. reasons as to why you get tannins. What do you like about it? I, I think it's, I smell more fruit. Mm. Um, I just want to drink it all. It really is really inviting for yeah. me, I guess. It does have a lot of really ripe, rich fruit characteristics. Like, um, and I also get like a balsamic. Mm, yes. Or like a balsamic reduction. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, and um, or like a demi-glaze sort of aromatic profile. I think it's great to have uh, plums or, or fig and prune. Like I feel like there's a, d a dried fruit note here. Of course, there's the oaky, vanillin, chocolatey espresso notes. Let's taste it. Stylistically, a very different experience on the palate for me. There is more oak on this wine, which is typical of the region. And of Spain, the Spanish love historically to age their red wines in oak and, and whites to some degree. And I think that's really reflected here. You're seeing two different oak regimes and it, it changes the, not just the palate, but the overall expression of the wine. I think this second wine is just has more power. Yes, is, I, what I get is more depth and more complexity. I, yeah. think it, I think it would pair well with a lot more things. Mm, that's nice, yeah. And I think also to your point with the complexity, I think there's a flavor complexity here too, like the tertiary flavors, the mushrooms, the truffle flavors, mm -hmm. um, forest for there's an earthy vibe too. But wow, I mean, I think both wines are approachable. I, wouldn't you say, I mean, mm -hmm. Yes. I think everyone would love these wines. Yeah, I think these would, uh, a nice spectrum of people with, with palates would, would enjoy this one. Totally. Sure. I think you could hit a lot of excitement. And from food, I think you can just have a lot of fun with a lot of different types of dishes. It was a pleasure to cook for you. Thank you for coming. Hey, now it's your turn to get in the Rivera Yi Rueda Pairing Challenge.